In this video, we're going to go over solving systems of differential equations with a repeated eigenvalue. We've looked at systems when there are two real eigenvalues, and then you can find two eigenvectors. Uh, we've looked at systems where you have a complex eigenvalue, um, and therefore a complex eigenvector uh, that will then lead to solutions. So here's a differential equation. Uh, the matrix associated with this differential equation is negative 7, 1, negative 4, negative 3. Uh, and if you solved this for its eigenvalue and eigenvector, it only has one eigenvalue, which is repeated twice, uh, negative 5, and it has an eigenvector associated with that of 1, Two. So I'll leave it up to you to, um, to show that this would be the eigenvalue and its associated eigenvector. Now, intuitively, from here, we would say that our solution would then be C1 times e to the negative 5t times the eigenvector, plus, now before when it's been repeated, all we've had to do is stick a t out in front. Now, this doesn't work, unfortunately, with systems, and you can check this by taking this differential equation, um, so this differential equation, plugging it back into the system, and you'll see it doesn't quite work. We need, actually, another component to this. Um, and so our other component, we're going to need another vector in order to do that. And so that component is going to go right in here, and we're going to need another vector. I'm going to call it P, um, and that's going to be multiplied by the E, just E to the negative 5T. And then you'd see that this would work, but that's very dependent on this vector P. Um, so this is really the guy that we need to find right now. So in order to find that, uh, we can find it has to be associated with our system that we already have. And our system that we already had, we took a minus lambda i, and, we, um, and then we multiplied that by our eigenvector. We found the eigenvector. Now we're going to find p, but we're going to find p not by setting this equal to 0, like with the eigenvector. We're going to set it equal to the eigenvector itself to find p. Right, so this is a minus lambda i, same as before, but this time, in order to find p, we set it equal to the eigenvector. All right, so a minus lambda i in this case, so I am taking a, point to it here, so this guy, minus the eigenvalue, so minus negative 5, so that would leave me with negative 2 there in the upper left-hand corner. 1 and negative 4 stay the same. And then down here in the bottom right, I've got to take negative 3 minus a negative 5. Uh, so that's negative 3 plus 5. That ends up being 2. Now this has to be multiplied by some vector p, so a p1 and a p2, I'll say. And then we need to set this equal to not 0 this time, uh, but the eigenvector, so 1, 2. So this leaves me with a, with a system of equations here where I'm going to get negative 2p1 plus p2 equals 1. I don't know if I can point to that uh, without having my hands on this paper, but it's negative 2 times p1 and then 1 times p2. So that's the row times the column. And then we need to do this next row times the next column. So that would be negative 4p1 plus p2, and that would equal that bottom component, because it was the bottom row times that column, which would be 2. Okay, so now I need to... I forgot my p2. So now I need to look at this and see if I can figure out a P1 and a P2 that will work in both of these places. Um, so a lot of times it's nice to be able to set one of these variables. Oh, do you know what? I think I, I just forgot something. I forgot a 2. I forgot that 2 right there. It should be right here. And let me double check this math again. So negative 2P1 
plus P2 equals 1, and negative 4 P1 plus 2 P2 equals 2. Okay, I got it now. So a lot of times in this, it's nice to be able to set one of these variables equal to 0. So a lot of times I just sort of try it, and I say, all right, what if P1 was 0? So if P1 was 0, can I now solve for P2? So if P1 is 0 in the first equation, P2 would be then 1. And then I check and see if that'll work in the second. So if P1 was 0, sure enough, that works, because 2 times 1 is equal to 2. All right, so this would work for a P vector. Our P vector would be 0, 1. Okay, so uh, just for just to show you if this would work in a different way, um, I, maybe I'd want to set P2 equal to 0. And if I did that, so this is just another option maybe. Let's just try it, see if it'll work. If P2 is 0, then from the first equation, P1 would have to be negative 1 half. Um, and then if I set P2 equal to 0, and p1 equal to negative one half. Hey, looks like it would work. Now I'm not going to use this one, but that would be another different vector. It's not the eigenvector, but it's another associated vector um, so that we can actually solve this thing. So we could use that blue one, but I'm not going to, so I'm going to cross it off. So now that we have found our p being 0, 1, I'm now going to plug it in to this equation up here. Um, Hang on, I'm trying to figure out how to make this thing erase. I'm going to pause for a second. Well, I can't figure out how to erase that P1 or that P value and put in 0, 1. So I'm going to go to a next slide because I need to rewrite this anyways and then solve for C1 and C2 with those initial conditions. So here's where I'm going on the next page. I'm going to take all of this, but I need to plug in the P value that we just found. And then I'm going to solve for C1 and C2 using these initial conditions. All right, so on to the next page. And let me now write out the solution. So we've got y, y equal to c1 times e to the negative 5t times the eigenvector, which was 1, 2, plus c2. Now c2 is multiplied by two things. It is multiplied by 1, the eigenvector, times t e to the negative 5t. 5t. And then also multi or added to that would be that p vector that we found, 0, 1, times e to the negative 5t. Alright, so there is our complete solution, and now we need to solve for c1 and c2. So we were given, sorry, and this is actually a vector, um, so we were given that that vector at 0, I think we've been calling this a capital, so I'll make it capital. Um, that vector at 0, I've got to plug in 0 into all of this, um, and, jeez, this is kind of a mess. Sorry, I do this a little bit, but these are not divides, those are vectors. Okay, better. Um, let me erase that guy. Okay, so we've got vectors here, a top and a bottom component, and I'm going to break down, I'm going to plug in t equals 0, and then break this down into top and bottom components. All right, so on the top, when t is equal to 0, e to the 0 is 1. So I've got c1 times 1, that's c1. Now, over here on the top, when t is 0, this whole term goes away. So I've got nothing there, and then, oh, check it out, I've got nothing here either, I've got 0. So really on the top here, we've just got c1 plus 0. I guess I'll put it in another zero, too. There really are two zeros in there. On the bottom, I've got here in the first uh, first term, I've got 2c1. So let me put that in there, 2c1. Plus, now when we plugged in zero, this term just goes away. And then I've got c2 times 1 times 1. So c2 in also in the bottom. And then I guess that was plus another, well, it was a 0 first, and then the C2. We're going to keep all our terms straight. And this was equal to that initial condition from the other page, which had that, uh, let's see, what was it? X of 0, I believe, was negative 1, and Y of 0 was 0. 
So if I set everything on the top equal to each other, I've got that C1 is going to be negative 1. And if I plug that into the bottom, then I've got negative 2 plus C2 is equal to 0, so it looks like C2 would be 2. So last step I want to do is write this solution out, and I want to write it out as one big vector. So I want to write out everything that's on the top of it and then everything that's on the bottom of it. So I'm going to do this by plugging in that C1 we just found was negative 1, and that C2 is 2, and then I'm going to multiply everything through. All right, so first term here, I've got negative 1 times negative 1 on the top times that e to the negative 2t. So that is a negative e to the negative 2t on the top. And then on the bottom, it looks like it's negative 1 times 2, so negative 2e to the negative 2t. Now for the second part, I've got 2 times 1 and 2 times 2, so top is 2 times 1, bottom 2 times 2, times this t term. So on the top, 2 times 1 is 2te to the negative 5t. And on the bottom, I'm going to have 4te to the negative 5t. And then on this next term, I've got 0 on the top, so I don't need to add anything there. And then I've got 2 times 1, so that's plus 2 e to the negative 5t. So plus 2 minus 2 would make that term, uh, make this term right here. Can't erase again, so let me rewrite some more. So I've got a plus 2 e to the negative 5t on the top, and let me simplify. So y of t is going to equal negative e to the negative 2. How did that turn into a 2? That's a 5 from the eigenvector. Sorry, I don't know if you noticed that before, but let's change those to a 5. I think I saw 2 somewhere in there, or 2. Those are the eigenvalue, which is negative 5. The whole time it's negative 5, so those should all be negative 5. Plus... 2t e to the negative 5t, so there's the top. On the bottom, those two e terms cancel, and we're just left with 4t e to the negative 5t. And there would be our solution to that system with a real repeated root. Um, and I just want to again state that the key for the repeated roots is to find that p value by taking a minus lambda i finding the p vector when you set a minus lambda i times p equal to the eigenvector. So here's the key, is that other term which then gets, or that other vector, which then gets multiplied by just e to the 5t um, in the solution.